During the making of that final album, the Beatles found themselves squabbling at regular intervals, with John Lennon and Paul McCartney frequently clashing over the album's creative direction. They had each developed a strong, separate compositional style by this point, and were eager to steer the album's flow. However, this only drove the two further apart, because while McCartney had grown tired of Lennon's experimental meanderings, Lennon couldn't stand McCartney's traditionalist approach to songwriting, which he dubbed granny music, possibly in reference to how McCartney had grown up singing songs around the piano with his family. In some ways, it's surprising that Lennon was so put off by McCartney's song proposal. Like many of Lennon's greatest works, Let It Be was inspired by a dream in which McCartney saw his late mother. Unfortunately, when McCartney sat down to sing the now immortal refrain, Lennon only grimaced. Lennon's main issue with Let It Be was that it sounded more like a song Paul had written for one of his side projects and then decided to pass on to the Beatles. Lennon regarded Let It Be Regressive, the type of music that would have been ideal in the mid-1960s, but felt outdated, uninteresting, and conservative by 1969. When Lennon heard McCartney's song, he was convinced he was attempting to duplicate Simon and Garfunkel's folkish poignancy. However, Lennon's memory definitely played tricks on him at this point, as Let It Be was recorded a full 10 months before Bridge Over Troubled Water entered the studio. It's much more likely that Lennon was opposed to the overt religion of Let It Be. Paul McCartney makes numerous references to Mother Mary throughout the song. Given Lennon's strong opposition to established religion, it's reasonable that he was concerned about being connected with a song that, from certain angles, reads like a hymn. When Phil Spector was hired to finish Let It Be in 1970, he inserted audio of Lennon taunting McCartney's efforts. While Lennon disliked the song, the rest of the world definitely disagreed. When it was released, the track debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, becoming the Beatles' 19th top hit. Unfortunately, it would be the Fab Four's final single together, 